Hi, I'm Dr. Christiane Northrup, an OBGYN physician and authority on everything that can go right with your body. I'm here to tell you how to transform your health and truly flourish while making your life easy. Artificial sweeteners. They are among the most widely used food additives today. And while artificial sweeteners have been controversial since the 1950s, they are still generally deemed safe despite scientific data that does not support this. In fact, mounting evidence shows that some artificial sweeteners contribute to the development of glucose intolerance and metabolic disease. They are also linked to a host of other symptoms and potential health issues, including gut dysbiosis, headaches and migraines, weight gain, and even cardiovascular disease. Even if you don't regularly eat or drink diet foods, Chances are you are consuming them without even realizing it. In this video, I'm going to share what you need to know about artificial sweeteners and how you can avoid them and replace them with healthier alternatives. So what are artificial sweeteners? Artificial sweeteners are a type of synthetic sugar substitute. They typically do not have calories. They were introduced in the 1950s they may be derived from sugar or other natural substances, but they're not natural. They are not magic bullets for weight loss. They're widely used in processed foods, including baked goods, cereals, soft drinks, powdered drink mixes, candy and chewing gum, puddings, canned foods, jams and jellies, dairy products, many other foods and beverages, toothpaste, mouthwash, and even children's medications. What are artificial sweeteners made from? Most popular ones are sucralose, Splenda, saccharin, sweet and low, aspartame, NutraSweet. They are made up of different chemicals and all have the same effect on the single taste receptor devoted to sweet. And what they tell your body that sweet equals good. Sucralose is the main sweetener in Splenda and many people think it's natural. The tagline is, made from sugar, so it tastes like sugar. Actually, it's made in a lab by a complex chemical process using chlorine and phosgene gas. It's so sweet that the manufacturer, the same manufacturer that used to own Domino Sugar, but sold it because Splenda became more profitable, has to cut it with 600 parts of a filler. Saccharin is the main sweetener in Sweet and Low. It was invented 130 years ago by two chemists at Johns Hopkins University. They were experimenting with coal tar derivatives. It belongs to a class of compounds called sulfonamides. It is 300 times sweeter than sugar. It's often mixed with other artificial sweeteners due to its metallic aftertaste. Studies have linked saccharin to bladder tumors in rats. In 1977, the FDA required warning labels on all saccharin-containing foods. In 2000, the FDA changed its stance, allowing saccharin to once again be sold without warning labels. Many health experts recommend that children and pregnant women avoid saccharin due to the possibility of allergic reactions, including breathing difficulties, headaches, skin rashes, and hives, and diarrhea. Aspartame was founded in 1960 by a medical chemist in Illinois who was investigating a drug for gastric ulcers. It is 180 times sweeter than sugar. It's marketed as equal and NutraSweet. The main sweetener in diet sodas is, uh, and Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi is aspartame. It's also found in chewing gum, sugar-free desserts, and yogurt. It's even in some medications, throat lozenges, and vitamins. Products with aspartame must carry a warning label for people with a rare genetic disorder known as PKU, phenylketonuria. It's an unnatural component in aspartame that is a methyl ester. It breaks down into methanol, which converts to formaldehyde. So here's the real kicker. Aspartame is harvested from the excrement of genetically modified E. coli bacteria. There are other artificial sweeteners on the market as well. Asulfame, potassium, sometimes called 
Ace K. It's marketed as Sunet and Sweet One. There's Neotame, originally introduced by Monsanto before it sold NutraSweet. It's 7,000 to 13,000 times sweeter than sugar. It's half the cost of sucralose. Dr. Joe Mercola calls it aspartame on steroids. Others to watch out for, Alatame, Cyclamate, Dulcin, Phenylalanine in aspartame, and Sorbitol. So why are artificial sweeteners bad for you? First of all, they are addictive. They act like sugar to activate your brain's reward circuits. So they trigger feel-good neurochemicals that prompt you to continue craving them, even though they don't have any calories. And it's hard to quit any kind of sugar, even the artificial stuff. The more sugar or sweet taste you eat, the more you want. In a famous 2007 rat study where the rats were given cocaine or saccharin and they were given a choice guess what they chose saccharin the rats were so addicted that the researchers wrote that they couldn't give the rats enough cocaine to overcome their desire for a hit of sweetness from the saccharin the same was true for real sugar also Artificial sweeteners may make you fat. Studies suggest that consuming fake sugar actually trains your insulin response to store more fat, not less. When you consume real sugar, your taste buds tell your pancreas, calories are on the way, produce insulin. When your body interprets something sweet, but there's no real sugar or calories, the pancreas still produces that same insulin response. Bummer, I know. Eventually, insulin response malfunctions the same as with type 2 diabetes. So artificial sweeteners do not lead to a decrease in cravings. They activate cravings. You don't get the satisfaction of ingesting sugar, so you end up overeating, thus packing on more pounds. And they also may cause a host of symptoms and chronic health issues, including cancer. Saccharin was listed as an anticipated human carcinogen in 1981. In 1997, it was deemed safe because scientists found the rats used in the earlier studies had a predisposition to cancer unrelated to the sweetener. Sucralose has been shown to mutate genes in test tubes, also cause anxiety, convulsions, dizziness, visual disturbances and eye problems, headaches, memory loss, mood swings, tinnitus, muscle pain, numbness, amazing, right? Acne, bladder problems, bloating, stomach and intestinal pain, bleeding gums, autism, multiple sclerosis. Now listen up. Aspartic acid in aspartame can cross the blood-brain barrier and it acts like an excitotoxin leading to apoptosis, that's cell death. Combined with caffeine, that's like diet colas, it may mimic the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, and may even trigger epileptic seizures. If you or anyone you know has headaches, anxiety, get off the diet colas. They are so addictive. I'll bet you when you're listening, you know someone, or maybe you yourself is addicted to diet colas. Many women use these as a form of weight control, just drinking diet cola all day long. You can get off it, by the way, in about a weekend. Just drink a lot of water and use chamomile tea. Uh, artificial sweeteners can lead to kidney damage, gut inflammation. They increase the number of what's called proteobacteria in mice, microbacteria associated with E. coli, salmonella, and Legionnaire's disease, atherosclerosis, even death. That's how bad some artificial sweeteners can be. So how do you eliminate them? First, start reading package labels. Look for them in the ingredient list including medications and toothpaste, by the way. Then, try natural sweeteners. Coconut sugar can be used one-on-one -on -one for a replacement for table sugar. And use lower glycemic index sugars. Stevia is uh, naturally occurring, not genetically modified. It has no side effects. Uh, Zacon, Y-A-C-O-N, is a tuber found in South America. It's sweet, but it contains indigestible sugars. It's low in calories and won't spike your blood sugar. You can find it as a syrup or the dried fruit slices. Monk fruit is a good one, also known as monk fruit extract or hanguo. It comes from a small round fruit grown in Southeast Asia. It contains natural sugars, mainly fructose and glucose, 
But unlike most fruits, the natural sugars in monk fruit are not the main compounds responsible for its sweetness. Intense sweetness is from a unique antioxidant called mogrosides, and it's been used for centuries in Chinese medicine. It's very safe. The FDA approved it in 2010. Monk fruit is 100 to 250 times sweeter than sugar, so a little goes a long way. It has no calories. Look for brand names like monk fruit in the raw and pure low. It is other names for it. Xylitol is interesting. It is a derivative of xylose, crystalline aldose sugar. It's not digestible. It can be a good sweetener option, though it has a small effect on blood sugar in some people. Some camps don't like xylitol because it's derived from xylose using hydrogen. I think that it's safe in small amounts. It's well tolerated by most people. It has the added benefit of preventing tooth decay. Gum with xylitol is good for preventing tooth decay. Then there's raw honey. Raw honey is a superfood. It's low enough on the glycemic index scale. It's considered a slow release sweetener. It contains an abundance of enzymes and nutrients that have healing benefits. One of which is if you get locally produced honey, uh, it will often eliminate allergies because all the pollens in the honey will actually begin to help your own immune system not react against the pollens in your environment. One of the healthiest ways to get your sweet fix is by eating fruit, fresh or dried. Now, it won't taste sweet at first if you've been using artificial sweeteners, even stevia. Here's what I want you to do is two weeks of no artificial sweeteners, even the natural ones like monk fruit and stevia. I want you to reset your sugar and your sweetness barometer in your body. So make some lifestyle changes um, for some people, hybridized fruits, such as grapes and bananas, are too sweet and they'll trigger a sweet craving, but not for many people. So, lifestyle changes. Eat healthy fats. Maybe begin your morning with something like bulletproof coffee, which has good fat, coconut oil, or brain octane oil, which is a medium chain triglyceride. Put that in coffee, whip it up in a blender. It's like a cappuccino, and that will often get you through the morning It'll also have the benefit of not spiking your insulin. By the way, having meditating, exercise, and sex are the three natural ways to get beta endorphin highs in your brain. Bring more sweetness into your life. Funny movies, massage, enjoy pleasurable activities regularly. Partner dancing is hugely pleasurable. All of what you'll notice when you're newly in love or you're doing some hobby that you love or watching a movie that you like, there's so much sweetness coming into your life that you don't need to get it through excess sugar. So bring more sweetness into your life that's not from an artificial sweetener. For more inspiration, visit my blog, exploredrnorthup.com, where you'll find wisdom for your mind, body, and spirit, and discover the connection between your thoughts, your beliefs, your physical health, and your life circumstances. And remember, you are in the driver's seat of your health, and achieving health can be easier than you think.